What do you mean by idealism? See, idealism is against the concept of realism. We should know the difference between idealism and realism. Realism means knowing the reality, knowing the, the practical aspects of the life that are that can be seen, uh, that can be you know understood directly. But there is idealism is a kind of idea. Is a kind of idea. The word idealism gives two types of meaning. An idea that supports an idea instead of reality. Or behind every reality, you have an idea. So it is the idea that is prior to whatever real thing you see in the world. So it is an idea. If you find anything, for example, if you take fan, fan is a real thing which you can see. But the idea behind that fan, how fan is created, the first idea that a thing rotating through electricity or through physical force gives air so that you feel comfortable. So that idea is very important. The fan is a real thing. And the mechanism, the idea of mechanism behind the fan or the imagination of fan. Imagination is a kind of idea. So that idea remains correct. Whereas the real thing that is fan, after some time it gets broken down or uh, it disappears. So any physical object disappears over the period of time. So the physical world have the nature of being you know, disappeared. That is how you know, every real thing you know, disappears. So the idea behind the real thing is, is you know, uh, is will be living forever. So this is what is idealism. And uh, the another meaning of idealism is a kind of you know, morality, ideal living. So you have certain ideas or you have certain moralities, you have certain values. So the idealism also represents a kind of morality and also the values. Values here are the preferences of the society. So, in political philosophy, you have two concepts, one is realism and idealism. Some people always boast of themselves of having a realistic perception of life. And uh, they criticize you know, people who are having ideals, uh, who are uh, uh, you know, following the uh, uh, values in the society. They are criticized as too idealistic, too impracticable. The, the idealism is being criticized like that by the realists, and the but which one is you know both the idealism and realism are very important. Both are important. So some people always think of only realities, except uh, some people think of only uh, idealistic things. So you have to balance them, idealism and realism. Here the philosopher. Uh, Frederick Hegel is uh, the philosopher of idealism. He belongs to 18th and 19th century. Uh, let us see, let us try to understand Hegel and his uh, philosophy of idealism. He uh, is uh, famously known for, you know, the dialectics, what is dialectics? 
what is historical dialecticalism, what is ideal dialectical, dialecticalism, that we will try to understand today. Uh, as an idealist philosopher, Hegel believed uh, as an idealist philosopher, Hegel believed that state is an ethical institution and, and you know, all encompassing or comprehensive. So it contains everything. It contains groups, it contains associations, it contains entities. The state is identified with the society. The state represents and contains in itself all the social aspirations, all the social groups. State fulfills the needs of the people. The state is a kind of moral organism. This is a kind of, you know, the organism. Uh, the state as an organism. This is very important. State as an organism and you have another meaning state as a, as a mechanism this you have to understand as an organism state represents the whole whole associations whole ideas whole human beings whole society organism means the it is like a human body individuals are like different parts of the body associations, individual groups, they are different parts of the state. See, when we say state as an organism, it tells you that human being is part of the state. Human being will have no independent existence. So if state is not there, human being is no more and he cannot live, he has no independent existence. So always human being and also his associations, groups are seen as the part of the state. So this is very important. You have to understand state as an organism. And as opposed to this idea that all individuals are part and parcel of the state, individual has no independent existence, the state as mechanism is, is a different uh, thing, is a different uh, way of understanding the state from the point of view of the human being. Human being will have independent existence for the sustenance of the individual, uh, you know, he has created the state. So your state is merely a means. Here the end is human being. But, but as a concept of organism, State is the end. Human beings are just in a means. Here the end is the state. In the concept of organism, state as organism, the end is the state. Ultimate end is the state. But whereas state as mechanism uh, means, uh, no, state is just a mechanism for the sustenance of the individual. Here the end is the individual. The individual is important. When we see state as mechanism, there you will find individual will have an independent existence. So this is very important. State as an organism, state as a mechanism. So the entire liberal discourse, entire philosophy of liberalism believes in the individual as the ultimate goal of the state. State is merely a mechanism for the sustenance of an individual. Individual will have you no know, independent existence, he will have freedoms, he will have liberties, so individual is become in the concept uh, you know, of state as mechanism. But state as organism, state is important. Individuals are just part and parcel of the state. So this you have to understand. Here, Hegel philosophy is philosophy of idealism, you know, propounded the theory of state as an organism. So your state is very important. Individual is nothing. They are just part and parcel of the state and the individual has no independent existence. Individuals merely exist to support the state. So that is how here state becomes the supreme. So this is 
the philosophy of idealism or philosophy of organism, state as organism. This is very important. And uh, now, after understanding what is idealism as opposed to realism, and uh, after understanding state as an organism as opposed to state as mechanism. So you have, we have tried to understand these two concepts, state as an organism, that's one thing, as opposed to state as a mechanism, and also uh, the state uh, and the, the philosophy of idealism as part of the, the, how we perceive state as part of the philosophy of idealism, uh, the idealism as opposed to realism. This one concept we try to understand. The another concept that we try to understand is state as an organism as opposed to state as a mechanism. This is very important. These two concepts are very important. State as an organism as opposed to state as a mechanism. Right? And the state and this idealism, the idea of philosophy of idealism as opposed to philosophy of realism. Right? These two are very important concepts. And uh, when we uh, see his writings, the important writings of Hegel, the phenomenology of spirit, science of logic, philosophy of right, the philosophy of history. These are the very important uh, writings of Hegel. Uh, why we should know, know Hegel about Hegel? Because to understand the later, uh, uh, the later ideas of you know, Karl Marx and uh, the ideas of fascism, uh, to understand those uh, historically very significant uh, phenomena, we have to know about Hegel and his idea of uh, dialectics. What is idealism and what is dialectics? Uh, these are the ideas, these are the uh, very important ideas from which Marx developed his theory of you know, uh, dialectical material. And also, uh, when we uh, see the different phases in the history, uh, like you know, uh, fascism where state was given too much of importance uh, that, you know, the idea of fascism, even the idea of Marxism, were, uh, you know, had, they had base, uh, they had basis from the ideas from the philosophy of Hegel. So this is very important. Uh, idealism. What is idealism? Let us try to understand, uh, before understanding idealism, you have to know idea or reason or divine will or spirit. In German language, the equivalent term is Geist, G-E-I-S-T, Geist. So here you have to know uh, the spirit. So they, they are sometimes used interchangeably and sometimes they are used um, you know, uh, the, in, in different uh, uh, ways. So, idea, any idea is based on some reason, based on some reason. And uh, the spirit uh, behind every reality is, is the ultimate reality that lives forever. So, these three the German language, the equivalent term for these three ideas is Geist, G-E-I-S-T, Geist, so Geist, sorry, Geist. So this is very important. Uh, Hegel says that the organic unity of knowledge leads to the inference that the entire universe is core and whole in which the only reality is the idea. This you have to understand. See, the unity of organic unity of knowledge, if you take the, the technology, the 
that is dominating throughout the world is a kind of organic unity of knowledge. Technology, for example, throughout the world, everybody using internet, everybody using Facebook, everybody using you know, Twitter, WhatsApp. Uh, these technologies have been used throughout the world. There's a kind of organic unity of knowledge about the mass media, the way we communicate. There's a kind of unity to go to any part of the world to find people using the communication technology. So this is this communication technology is a kind is based on some kind of unity of knowledge. Uh, so the entire universe looks like a coherent whole. Entire universe is using you know, the technology, communication technology. So it looks like a coherent whole. It is connected to, you know, uh, you know connected to each other. The this the reality is idea. See the idea behind this communication technology is real thing. So the organic unity of knowledge uh, leads to the inference that the entire universe is a coherent whole. So the whole world is running behind, is running because of an idea. So this is all about so, uh, so now you have understood what is organic unity of knowledge, what is core and whole, and uh, in which only the reality is ideal. Here he is trying to look at the reality from the point of view of idea behind the reality. So the entire idea behind this technology, communication technology, that idea, I know Hegel says is real. It's, it's, uh, it's, uh, the things that, are, that appear may disappear over the period of time. But the idea behind them will live forever. This is the concept of idea you know, that is being given by Hegel. A spirit or gaze enables to reach a stage from ignorance to intelligence in the process of historical development of the universe. The spirit is expressed in terms of the reason. The spirit makes several experiments before reaching its final position. Such final position will be real, rational, and logical. Hegel argued. So, uh, so now you have understood what is organic unity of knowledge, what is core and whole, and uh, in which only the reality is the idea. Here he is trying to look at the reality from the point of view of idea behind the reality. So the entire idea behind this technology, communication technology, that idea, I you know Hegel says is real. It's uh, uh, the things that, are, that appear may disappear over the period of time. But the idea behind them will live forever. This is the concept of idea you know, that is being given by Hegel. A spirit or gaze enables to reach a stage from ignorance to intelligence in the process of historical development of the universe. The spirit is expressed in terms of the reason. The spirit makes several experiments before reaching its final position. Such final position will be real, rational, and logical. Hegel argued that what is rational will be real. This is very important. If you see any real thing that is existing, that is uh, prolonging, so behind that every real thing, you have some rationality. So without rationality, no idea will emerge, no idea will remain forever. So every idea is based on certain rationality. And also, uh, here you have to understand, the spirit moves from uh, ignorance to intelligence. See, 
uh, when you see the uh, you know historically if you see how in the beginning civilization every civilization was at nascent stage was at early stage over a period of time civilization developed so you take anything for example if you take any you know thing that you will see for example you see the car before that idea the reality of car car mobile autom automobile is seen uh, there was an idea that idea you know evolved that idea changed from uh, knowing little to knowing more so the more idea develops based on reason then the reality whatever you will see the reality uh, uh, behind every reality you see how idea moves from knowing little to knowing more so we see the four when we for example i am giving you the example of a phone earlier you had only black and white cell phone and its screen was very small and before the cell phone you had page pager pager uh, to pager used to send this message later on it developed into a mobile phone the earlier the mobile phone was black and white the screen was very small and you could make only you no know, voice calls and later on that mobile you know the screen was enlarged you find later on the colors different colors screen screens having color colors and from making this phone calls you can make video calls so later on after uh, no video calls was uh, introduced later on uh, internet could be used and uh, through internet you can uh, make you uh, know you can send messages you can mail messages so this is the development from small mobile which was very small with which used to have very black and white screen now you will find the more developed cell so the, that is how the spirit moves from uh, from the position of little knowing to the position of more and more knowing and more and more developed so that is how uh, so whatever the idea that was created was rational and the rationality improves and the idea also gets improved you will find the real thing which you are using in, in more you know, uh, polished uh, item you will hold in your so this is very important so uh, you will whatever reality you will see that reality behind it you have an idea traveling from knowing nothing to knowing so much so that is how the idea then moves from knowing nothing to knowing so much so much so this is what you no know, hegel said so the spirit he says the entire world is moving uh, uh, on the basis of idea or spirit so spirit here means whatever reality is there we have every reality we have some spirit some idea some rationality so this is how uh, he try to understand the word uh, so this is enough they they try to understand what is idea or what is spirit how spirit moves from uh, knowing less to knowing more stage so this is what we try to learn today we try to learn three things say as an organism as a genus as a mechanism when you view state as an organism individual just becomes a part of it your state becomes too powerful state becomes too important not individual and another one is the idea of idealism philosophy of idea as a genus the philosophy of genus and uh, the third important thing 
that we try to understand is idea, spirit behind the real world. How the idea behind the real world moves from knowing nothing to knowing so much. So this is what we try to understand. Uh, I'm stopping here. But tomorrow we will uh, learn about, we will try to understand the historical idealism and also uh, uh, dialectical idealism. These two concepts we will try to understand tomorrow. Thank you.